Good morning, everyone. Happy Memorial Day. I hope you have a great day today, spending this day with your family and friends and remembering that today is a day that we remember all of the men and women who have given their lives throughout our country's history to preserve our freedoms and our liberties that that have been bestowed upon us. So um, I just hope you all remember that today. It's not just a free day, a day off. It's a day to remember the fallen. And we appreciate everyone who ever gave their life to, to sacrifice to this country for our freedoms. All right, so since today is Memorial Day, a lot of people go on picnics. A lot of people go camping on Memorial Day. So I thought I would talk a little bit about places where people like to visit. Um, and so, in today's world, a lot of people live um, in more urban and developed areas. Um, I know in Cock County, we're not so urban, but there's still a lot of people who live more in town than other people do. Um, so, a lot of times when people have free days and they get days off from work and holidays and such, they like to heavily rely upon parks and forests and just outdoor spaces for recreation, especially right now in these unprecedented times um, where a lot of things are shut down. The parks and stuff are reopening, so I imagine there's probably a lot of people visiting the parks and, and the campgrounds and stuff today. So we're just going to talk about it just a little bit, okay? So because recreational areas are so important to people, society has set aside many natural areas for this purpose. Okay, so to preserve those areas, national, state, county, and even city agencies designate them or appoint them as parks and recreational areas. So we're fortunate here in Cock County to have several um, parks and recreational areas designated for us. A particular park or recreational area is usually set aside because it has important characteristics that people want to preserve. It might be a forested area. It might be a, pla a home to wildlife. It may contain waterways or it may just be very beautiful. Or it could have special educational, scientific, or historical significance. So agencies manage these parks and recreational areas to preserve those features and to most effectively meet the needs of the people who use this area. So, in setting aside recreation areas, we enhance the elements of that ecosystem because it is protected. Um, so, wildlife benefits, when its habitat is preserved, the place where it lives, when that is preserved, those animals um, have a much better um, opportunity to reproduce and to grow and, and to um, help balance out the ecosystem there uh, because the water quality remains good. Um, they're, they're protected from development. They're protected from pollution somewhat. We talked about this a little bit in the video before that. There is pollution that does get into our national parks and stuff, but for the most part, they're pretty protected. Um, the numbers are protected from hunting. It's just natural predators, um, and so it is protected also from land pollution um, as well. So because society places great value on these recreational areas and the aesthetic ex experiences, that means like just going and enjoying all of this stuff, um, we are becoming increasingly aware of the need to preserve and protect areas for this reason, okay? So we're going to talk about um, some special areas that we have right here in Cock County, and we're going to think about ways that we can help to manage and to protect these areas that we visit, especially today when a lot of people are going to go picnicking and go to campgrounds and, and shoot fireworks and all this stuff. So we're going to talk about things that we can do to help um, to help maintain and to manage these areas, okay? So the first one we're going to talk about is the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. So we've talked about this in other videos, um, but we're going to talk about the history of it because when you visit an area... If there's a park ranger on duty, that is a wonderful opportunity to ask questions about the history of the park and why is this park important to the community and maybe finding out how many people visit the park in a year. Um, what are some things that you can do while you're there to help the park? Um, how, uh, 
what are some of the plants and animals who live in the park and how can you help them? And what might happen if people didn't do their part to help in these parks and stuff, okay? So there's all kinds of good stuff that we can that we can ask when we go. Um, we're big on going into parks and stuff. We went last year over into Middle Tennessee and visit all kinds of waterfalls. Well, I think we saw like eight waterfalls in one day. It was really cool. But we visited a lot of state parks um, going towards Middle Tennessee. So we took that time to ask those people about these parks that we'd never been to before. So the Great Smoky Mountains National Park is right in our back door, isn't it? So um, previously, it was owned by hundreds of small farmers and a few timber and paper companies. And the idea to make it into a national park actually started in the 1890s. But there were bills passed, uh, or bills that tried to pass through Tennessee Congress and North Carolina Congress, because Great Smoky Mountains National Park is in North Carolina as well. But that bill failed, and they kept pushing and pushing and pushing. So in the mid-1920s, actually, motorists, people just driving around enjoying the scenery, were the ones who started pushing because they wanted to enjoy this natural scenery that's found throughout the Tennessee and North Carolina mountains. So in May 1926, Calvin Coolidge signed a bill. Now, when the bill was signed, it was a park, but there wasn't much to it. So, there had to be money raised to build roads and campgrounds and other facilities and trails, hiking trails. So, um, the money was raised. Tennessee North Carolina legislators donated money. Um, private groups and individuals and even school children were given money. And so, when this, was, this bill made this park, it was right before the Great Depression, which happened in 1929. So, by the time they got the money raised, the Depression had already hit. People had lost their jobs. Some people had lost their homes. Um, farms also weren't doing too well at that time. So, they created a Civilian Conservation Corps, which provided jobs from 1933 to 1942. So, these men work to build trails and campgrounds and bridges and a lot of those are still standing today they were that well built so um, by 1940 the work was you know pretty much then they were still working a little bit but um, the Great Smoky Mountains National Park was dedicated by Franklin Roosevelt so um, if you head out to the Cosby campground today and decide to hike to Henwalla Falls or go to the Midnight Hole or any of those places up in there just remember that if you go and play and picnic please don't leave your litter behind. Um, it's not good for the animals who live there. We're trying to maintain and, and help their habitat. So please don't leave anything behind. Just only leave your footprints. And remember, it's a national park, so you can't take flowers or rocks or sticks or anything like that out because it could disturb the ecosystem. So just remember that as you're visiting today. All right, so another place that we have in Cock County is Cherokee National Forest. That is the only national forest in Tennessee. Pretty cool, right? And it's right in our backyard. All right, so there's 650,000 acres um, of national forest that covers Tennessee and North Carolina. And this, of course, Cherokee National Forest, you guessed it, was the grounds, hunting grounds, hunting and gathering grounds for the Cherokee until they were forced to evacuate in 1838. And after that, then loggers came and stripped the area of trees. And then we had the Weeks Act in 1911 that gave the federal government authority to buy private land for water and timber purposes. So Woodrow Wilson bundled up a lot of this land and he decided to designate it to become a national forest in 1936. And that Civilian Conservation Corps, those same guys who built, helped build the roads and the campgrounds and the trails and stuff for the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, also built a lot of the roads and trails and facilities for the national forest. And some of those are still in existence today, too. So there's a lot of areas around in here that may not be actually the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, but it's the National Forest. So it's the same thing. It's a protected area, so um, and it's regulated. So, you know, just be careful when you go. Leave no trace behind. Don't leave your litter. Take it with you. Take a Walmart bag and keep all your trash in it. Put it back in your car when you get back into town or get home put it in your trash can, okay? Help those animals out and keep our land beautiful. There's a lot of people who come and visit the National Park and the National Forest, and we want those guys to, you know, enjoy the scenery just like we do when, when we go and visit it, even though it's in our backyard, okay? Now, we also have another place that a lot of people don't know about, and I may regret giving this wonderful jewel to you, but um, we have the Martha Sunquist State Forest, and that belongs to the state. And it is completely surrounded by the Cherokee National Forest in Del Rio. 
um, actually where Del Rio and Grassy Fork kind of meet right there. So the land was purchased in 2001 from the International Paper Company, also the Champion Paper Company is what they were called before, the same guys who polluted the Pigeon River. Um, so anyways, <laughs> they had owned it since 1930, and before that, a group called the Lambs Gulf Company owned it, so that's why the area up in there is called the Gulf, because of who owned it before Champion, or International Paper Company. It is a wildlife management area, so fish and hunting is are regulated and it is named in honor of our former first lady Martha Sunquist she does visit this this park very often and hikes she's um just visited I don't know a couple months ago I think it was maybe or she was going to before all of this with COVID-19 hit I can't remember anyway she was supposed to come she still comes and hikes it there's a waterfall up there you know and that's the thing too Great Smoky Mountains National Park Cherokee National Forest we have waterfalls everywhere so if you don't have plans today you know, it's a pretty, it's it's going to be a mostly pretty day, maybe some scattered showers and stuff, but, you know, get out and find a waterfall and go and see it. It's beautiful. But just remember, as you're visiting these places, please leave no trace and don't leave your litter behind. Take it out with you because um, we want to keep the place looking beautiful for visitors and, of course, healthy for the animals and, and plant life that lives there, okay? And remember, you can't take anything in and out of state and national forests, all right? So we have some beautiful places just right here in our backyard that we can go visit. I hope you visit one today. I hope you remember to take your litter with you as you leave and just enjoy the beautiful things that God has created for us. All right, so since it is Memorial Day, I do have a patriotic craft. You are going to need a toilet paper roll, of course. I have already painted mine blue and I took a hole puncher and I punched a hole right there. And I punched a hole on the other side because we are going to make a windsock, okay? So, I'm going to take a piece of string and I'm going to tie it through my holes. Okay, so this is a great fine motor activity for your little ones. Pushing stuff through holes, teaching them how to tie, great fine motor. So let your littles try it, and if they need a little bit of help, help them, but, but let them try to do it. It's great activities for them. You could even take and have them string some macaroni on it, on the string, and or beads or something like that, and make it really festive and pretty, and that would be great for their fine motor skill development. You could also sort the beads. Um, if you did beads like big and small and sort them by colors. And of course, your toilet paper roll is blue, so point out, have them point out other things that they see that are blue. Um, and actually, we're going to make a American flag windsock. So not only do they need to know that blue is an important color in our American flag and to recognize it other places out in nature and stuff, but we're going to talk a little bit about the history of the flag, okay? So, June 4th, 1777, the Second Continental Congress had adopted a resolution to make a flag. And they decided what the flag would look like, but not until a couple years later did the colors and everything really have a meaning. So, they decided that the flag would have vertical stripes. That's a great vocabulary word for kids, talking about vertical runs from left to right. And horizontal goes up and down. So, learning that term vertical from left to right, our flag has vertical stripes. The blue stands for vigilance, perseverance, and justice. So, always watching, never giving up, and treating all Americans with justice. Okay, that's an important lesson, isn't it? All right, so now, I did not, I thought I might have, I was digging through all my craft supplies, really, honestly, just trying to use what I had. Um, I thought I had a star stamp. I was going to stamp me some white stars on here, but I don't. But I did find some stickers that have some stars on them. They're yellow. Um, I know they're not white, but it'll do. So, I'm going to take these stickers, and I'm going to stick them all over my toilet paper tube. So, you can talk with your kids about how many stars there are on the flag. There's 50 stars. And talk about why there's 50 stars. So when they first made that resolution in 1777, the flag had 13 stars because there were only 13 states. But now we have 50 states. 
if you have older kids, you could challenge them to, like, name the 50 states. That would be awesome. And if they know their 50 states, maybe they could even tell you the capitals of the states. That would be really cool. And definitely make sure that they know that Tennessee's capital is Nashville because everybody needs to know the capital of the state they live in. So, 50 stars for 50 states. Let me get a few more on here. And I know they're not white, but we'll use our imagination. It's okay. No problem. I've got just a few more. I had some stars on clouds, but I don't think that'd be very patriotic looking to you. Okay. You could even have kids practice counting to 50. That would be great. If you had enough little things to glue on for stars, you could make 50 stars and have them count and encourage that one-to-one -one correspondence. Um, you could have, if you got older kids, they could count by twos to 50. They could count by fives to 50. They could count by tens to 50. All while learning that we have 50 states in the United States. Very cool, huh? Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our stripes. So, I'm just going to take some Elmer's craft glue. And here's another big vocabulary word for kids to learn. The colors alternate. Okay, so we have a blue background with yellow stars. And then we have red and white stripes that alternate. That means like that they take turns. Okay, so I'm going to take and I'm going to glue the white and the red. All right, so now is the time to tell children that we have 13 stripes on our American flag. That was also included in the resolution of 1777. And that was to symbolize the 13 colonies, which at the time they only had 13 states, but the 13 stripes stayed because of the 13 original colonies. You could have, if you got older kids, you could have them to try to name the 13 colonies, the 13 original colonies. New York and Pennsylvania and Rhode Island and New Jersey and Virginia and Georgia and North Carolina. And I'll probably forget some, so I think I might stop there and get that one glued down good. You can have them count something to 13. Um, that is not wanting to stick for some reason. You could have them, you know, older kids. Is 13 an even or an odd number? 13 is odd. When you try to divide it out, it will not divide evenly. So it is an odd number. Okay. So, of course, then you have the color red. Let me show them the color red. You can write these words out, too, if they already know their colors and, and maybe they need to work on high-frequency words. You could write out the word blue and write out the word red and let them trace it. It don't have to be with paper and pencil. Goodness, go out and scratch it in the dirt, in the sand, get some salt, make Play-Doh letters. There's all kinds of cool stuff you can do that's still fun, but they're still learning. Okay, so could do the color red, show me something else that's red. And so then you could tell them that red in the flag stands for courage and readiness to sacrifice. Okay. And and these definitions were by President Ronald Reagan, but they sounded the best and they and they made more sense for little kids anyways. And then the white stands for high ideas, pure intentions, purity and innocence. All right, so you could have them to find other things that are white around the room or outside, wherever you're at. You could have them sort the objects into red, white, and blue, give them some different things and make them sort things out into a red group, blue group, and a white group. Of course, writing the words is great. 
um, any of that stuff to get kids ready for school. And then if they're still, if they're in school, these are things to keep all of that stuff fresh in their mind because kids do get a summer lag. Um, and school's been out for a really long time already. So just anything to kind of keep all this stuff fresh in their minds, all right? So um, Ronald Reagan also said that all of these colors are the human spirit that we Americans cherish. So you think about all those adjectives that I just gave you about um, adjectives and nouns. Um, I guess those were nouns, really. Um, vigilance and perseverance and justice and courage and readiness to sacrifice and purity and innocence and all that stuff. And you think about all those nouns. That is everything that we Americans embrace. And that's why we celebrate today and why we celebrate the 4th of July and why we celebrate Veterans Day. All of those things and honoring these men and women and remembering what they have sacrificed for our country. So, definitely. All right. So, our windsock is finished. You have something really pretty to hang up outside on your porch for Memorial Day and to remember all of the men and women, the brave men and women who have given their lives all throughout the years, not just recently, but golly, think back of all the things that have happened from the American Revolution on. Thousands upon thousands, even millions of men and women gave their lives so that we could have freedom. So that's today's a very important day to remember, definitely. All right, so if you go out and you visit somewhere, please remember to enjoy the beauty that's been given us. And remember that if you um, are going to picnic somewhere, please take all of your trash with you if there's not a trash can there. If there is a trash can, please put it in the trash. Um, but a lot of them, you know, are bear proof. I don't know how much they're being emptied right now since things are kind of just opening up. We always just kind of take ours with us so we don't have to leave a lot of work for somebody else to have to do we just bring ours back home and throw it in our trash can here or stop at the dump and throw it in there or whatever so anyways just remember take your trash with you leave no trace behind and do your part to help manage and to protect you know don't pick flowers and take rocks out of um the the forests and the parks and stuff because you will disrupt their ecosystem and their habitat okay so just remember all that stuff as you're out enjoying your day today i hope you have a wonderful and a blessed day miss greta will be with you tomorrow and um i will see you guys on wednesday and i hope you have a beautiful day stay safe and stay well bye